Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of our upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so I'd like to welcome everyone back. and Everybody that's been following this show for a while now, this is our 10th episode, working with our co-host here, Kamar Zaman. So first off, Kamar, just want to say, hey, welcome back to the show. Excited to have you back. Thank you, Adam. I'm glad to be here again. Okay, so as always, you always bring us these amazing, amazing topics. This is our 10th episode from this series, and today we'll talk about how to amplify local businesses through PR. And for those of you that are watching this, if you haven't checked out some of our earlier episodes, last episode we did, How to Make Your Business Rank Locally, some other some other titles in the series, Optimize Your Content for Google, How to Think Differently in Business. I mean, Kamar brings us topic after topic, all of them um, a master class where I learn a lot and I hope the audience does as well. So again, today, episode number 10, how to amplify local business through PR. Kamar, just to get us kicked off, maybe briefly, tell us a little bit more about, and we'll just do a check-in for those that are new to the to, to this particular series. Tell the audience a little bit more about your background, please. All right. So my background is I'm a fan of Adam Torres' Mission Matters. That's my first credential. But I came from the world of digital marketing and SEO, started from developer to a marketer, and marketing was not something I went to school for. But to me, everybody is a marketer, and if you are a CEO, if you are running your business, if you're not a marketer, your business is dying. So I started from a developer, but I had to wear many, many hats, and marketing was one of my you know, golden ticket that it's come to me all this way. So that's my background, and now I'm teaching people as well as doing it for them. So just a humble beginning, you know. Awesome. So today's topic, again, so how to amplify local business through PR. Where do you want to start with this one? This is a big one. This is this is a grand one because this is number 10, you know. So 10 means something, but I want to actually go over why we got it to number 10 now. So if you remember, I'm I'm looking at the dates. Back in May 4th, 2021, Mm. Adam, you came to me and said, let's start a marketing masterclass, and we recorded the first episode, and then we dabbled into starting something. But I wanted to have like a story to tell. So once you get to episode number 10 and you consume it, If you haven't consumed my episodes from 1 to 10, you need to now, after episode number 10, listen to everyone, and I'll tell you why this is important more than ever. So we we first talked about importance of media, which was basically why do you even need media? So that was episode June 14th. Then we talked about after media was important, we talked about June 30th, how to create your brand story And today we are going to talk about the PR. So we have come a long way, and these topics that we did are sequential. So please follow these topics sequentially till you get to topic number nine, which was how to make your business rank locally. This is very important if you're going to watch episode number 10 or listen to it. So the goal of this one specifically is that if you are a local business, i.e. you're a lawyer, you're a PI attorney, you're a divorce lawyer, you're a plumber, roofer, 
telephone repair company, whatever your business is, if nobody can find you, you are a very expensive billboard that people have not found you. And in the last topic, we talked about how to rank your map locally. Now, it's easier said than done because what I tell you is obviously strategic, but if you don't do it, you will never rank. So this this episode number 10 is a very important episode, so I want you to pay attention to this one because we are going to give you away today literally the strategies that I personally use with my agency clients that are paying us thousands of dollars and you are getting this for free. All you have to do is watch episode number one through nine and the 10 is basically the wrap up of how do you get yourself in big media? How do you get yourself ranked on the first page of Google? All of that. So are you ready? Let's do it. I'm in. Let's do it. Okay, so today's topic is you have created content, you have a website, you have a blog, you even have a local map page, but people are not able to find you. So what can you do? So if you recall the episodes, we, we have been talking about search engine optimization. So let me t differentiate the difference between SEO and PR. So the search engine is a glue to your website. You build a website, then you come in and you put your keywords, you make sure your content is ready. And now that you have all that readiness available, the biggest challenge in SEO is that how are going to people find you, hmm. correct? So that's, that's the biggest thing. So what people do typically is they will start searching for a local SEO company. They will, if they're in LA or in Dallas or Plano, wherever they are, they will search for a local SEO company and that SEO company will tell them one of the following things. Okay, you have a website. Now we need to start building your links so you can get found. We are going to do X, Y, Z, and they're going to charge them X amount of dollars. And sometimes that can run into a really aggressive budget. And the companies that are ready to do that, they invest in that. And they are hoping that in month one or two or three, they're getting found so they can start to get their site ranking. And unbeknown to them, that never happens or that rarely happens. It sometimes happens, but if the business that they are in is very competitive, it can take up to a year before they can start to get that phone to ring and they get into something what I call a terminology that I kind of have heard from people and I kind of use it many, many times. It's called invoice fatigue. Mm. So they month one, they pay this SEO guy, let's say $2,000 to do the SEO. They trust them and they give them the 2,000, write the check for 2,000, the guy goes in, he's doing something in his cave and comes back after one month and gives them a glorified report. You know, I did this for you. But when the business owner searches for where he never finds it, so he texts or calls the guy and says, hey, I can't find my website. He says, well, this is only month one. The Google takes about four to five months. So hang in there. I'm doing my work. Okay. They don't know what is going on. So then they mm -hmm. wait. And then month number two comes in. He gets a report. He pays $2,000. And now they're in month number five, six, seven. And all they are hearing is this is a very tough business. Google has changed their algorithm. The typical... And I'm not saying these are excuses. This this is the reality. Yeah. Okay. So these are the realities of the CEO and the SEO guy will tell them, I'm there. You know, your page is on page three. Your page is on page four. But Adam, it's not getting their business any leads. So they are mm. in the invoice fatigue. So what do they do? They can get rid of the SEO guy that's the one option if they don't have a yearly contract. 
So let's say they do that. Look, assuming there was no contract, the guy was not able to deliver, even though he was quite diligent to do what he could, he was not able to deliver. So what he does is they fire the SEO guy. So the new SEO guy comes in and he says, yeah, the other SEO guy didn't do a good job. I'm going to get you in three months. So what happens? Mm. He comes in. And in three months, the rankings have improved. Why have they improved? Not because this new SEO guy did anything better, because the other guy had actually done the work, but it was not matured yet. So the time yeah. factor kicks in, so the new SEO guy takes the benefit. Or the new SEO guy still does not do anything, and now they are month 10, and nothing is happening. So it is very important, wherever you are in your SEO journey, you mm -hmm. need to understand what is SEO about and how do you actually get your phone to ring and even to get you lead and you can quantify and audit everything in month number one. So every time you write a check, you understand that. So ready for that segue? No, you so, have any so yeah. well, well, so here's the thing too. So when you think about from the business owner's point of view, and I think this is why SEO gets a, it's a, gets a bad rap sometimes, is that you know there might be people doing good work, or sometimes there might be yeah. people not doing the right work, right? But either way, it does have a little bit of time that it does take. So I get it completely. I mean, it makes sense, and I think a lot of people listening maybe that have gone through multiple companies or are wondering why you know certain things happened or didn't like this just gives some insight that they're not alone is what it comes down to. So it Let's keep going. This is great. Okay, good. So as we talked about, let's understand, and, and I'm going to summarize this because I don't want to go through all the nine episodes. The SEO only consists of three things. The first thing is the strategy to have your website content built in, which we covered in one of the episodes. The second thing is have your website discovered by Google. Okay, that's the very first thing. And discovery of your website is done through link building. So part of the SEO that the SEO guy is supposed to do is create content that would create links. So one of the ways to create content and to create links is a blog. So we talked about that in our episodes that if you blog, and if you write the right kind of keywords, then your blog will then connect back to your page and it'll rank. Now, the third thing, that the real gluing thing that is coming in is how you get these blogs get discovered. That's when you come to do PR. So mm. it's kind of like a Venn diagram. On the left side, you see SEO on the right side, you see PR and in the middle is a sweet spot and that's called, you know, getting found. So what is the PR going to do? The purpose of the PR is to create three things. The first thing is it creates awareness of your brand, okay? And we call that in our terminology expertise. So mm -hmm. if you are creating a PR about your business, People are discovering you. You're getting found through PR. The journalists are obviously finding you, etc. So you are building your expertise. Once your expertise is visible to Google, Google is giving a factor that, okay, this local plumbing company in LA just announced their PR, so they are looking to grow their business. So Google factors that in, okay? The next thing, it builds authority. How mm -hmm. so? That when you are a local plumber and you have been featured into a news journal that actually talks about you and there's a link back coming to you in some shape or form, then Google considers that local newspaper an authoritative mention or a citation. As a result, you are building that authority coming back to you. And when you have multiple news sites talking about you, they kind of link back to your website. You are getting a signal of authority. 
And as you are getting the signal of authority with expertise, there's another thing that is happening. Google starts to trust your website more than it did before. Google will look at the signals of content, good content. There's no duplicate content. It's really, really good. You are getting value. People are considering you as a source for that content. You are getting those links from sites that are authoritative. The local newspapers are authoritative. So now your trust is building. So that Google calls it the EAT, E-A-T. And I have a topic, a blog that I wrote that we can add that to the show notes. So if they read about EAT, expertise, authorities, and trust, now, if you remember my Venn diagram, you have your SEO happening on the left, and then you have your PR happening on the right, and in the sweet spot in the middle is a mix of all that is happening. So now your local business is getting found. How do you like that so far? I love it, and it and it makes total sense because I mean the PR side of things, and you were you were always our guru in PR and in doing this and. What and I, I've just noticed the difference. Like based on what we're doing, how we're doing it, I've noticed that you know our month to month our website traffic and things it's normally growing. And on that PR side of things, like if you Google or you go out there and you put in like Adam Torres podcaster or Adam Torres mm-hmm. like you know something like that, like or or Mission Matters podcast or this or that, like it adds to it. So like the amount of links and other things that are happening, like so I, I mean I can attest just from firsthand, like this was the first year that we really kind of doubled down on working through PR and adding that through through Kiss PR and your company and mm-hmm. and we benefited. So I mean I can say that firsthand as a testimonial on that side. And no no I don't get paid for saying this by the way. This is a fact. And this is <laughs> yeah. and this is yeah. one of the reasons why I started this series with Kamar is because a lot of people that do different things but I mean not not putting anything against anybody but like we've we've gotten some results based on his strategy. So no continue. Makes and I I've right. seen that we benefited from it. So go ahead. So Here's the thing. Not only have you benefited, but let me actually segue a little further. So phone rings, you do an interview, you get a client, and you have done a PR. Now, remember, when you do the PR and you get your distribution report and you have 400 sites that have picked you up, right? Not just Mm -hmm. you. It's your client that has been picked up. And they are getting a link from each of those sites. And not only are they getting that, they are getting found through LinkedIn and Twitter and everything else where you guys are posting your content. And Mission Matters has a large infrastructure of social links that are powering up, like the Apple and SoundCloud. All these sites are pointing back to what? They're pointing back to their website. So this Mr. Whoever podcast Mm -hmm. that you did, host, you know, the guest that you did, he's getting those links. So these podcasts are really, really powerful for these people. So when when they do that, they just need to know how to leverage that to their internal. And sometimes they don't know how to do that. So, but that's a different class. So going back to what I was talking about, I want to talk to you here about a case study. So and, and this is as real as it gets. So mm-hmm. I have a friend who owns a cellular repair service in a very small town about two hours from here, okay? And this guy calls me and he says to me that I want to – I just opened up my new store and I want to – I want your help to run Google Ads for me. And I said, okay, well – Tell me what what is your product? And he says I'm a, I've opened up a new cell phone store. And I said, what do you do? He says we do iPhone and Android repair. So now I do a search in his town, and I find that in his city of twenty thousand people, there are twenty stores. Now, Adam, this is so a red ocean. Twenty hmm. small population of such a small town and there are 20 stores offering the same service. So what am I going to do for this guy? Because this guy is not, he's a cell phone repair store. They charge Mm -hmm. $100 to repair. Like how can he even afford SEO, right? And and Mm -hmm. the next thing is 
even if he could afford SEO, he, he wants the business like tomorrow. He doesn't want it to wait for six months. So I said, okay, well, let me do some search on Google Ads. And I come to find out that Google does not allow you to advertise when you're using terms like iPhone repair. That's kind of like a tough term. Either Got they it. don't allow it, and if they do allow it, they will charge you a lot. So now I said, dude, th this is not going to work for you. So he said, what should I do? I said, well, do you have a website? He said, no. I said, well, do you have a map? He said, yeah, I do have a Google map. So we consulted him. He brought in his tech guy, which is his brother. So I said, okay, go and upload your logo, a couple of pictures that you're doing a cell phone repair and go and set it up, and do you have a Facebook page? He says, no, I don't have a Facebook page. So I said, go and create a Facebook page, and then put the Google business address, put the Facebook page address, and give it to me. So they, they send it to me uh, in three to four days. Then what we did was we created a PR, okay? That was the only logical thing that I found to create a PR, and we positioned the PR as John Doe, I'm, I'm not gonna mention their names, but John yeah, Doe opens sure. up a new store in XYZ just in time for Halloween. Okay, so we gave some spin, and then we wrote a story that why do you you know need to get your phones repaired? So we came up with the story angle, and then we launched the PR. The PR went live on Friday night. Now, some people might say, well, why are you sending PR to on Friday night? Who's going to read it? So, mm -hmm. we, but we did. Okay, we sent it out on Friday night. And today is Monday. And on the first page of Google, he has his map ranking, not for his brand. I'm talking about the keywords that people search for. He has his map ranking, like I said, he has his Yahoo News article ranking. He has mm -hmm. his Associated Press article ranking. So out of the 10 spots in Google search, eight of those belong to him. And I'm sure his competitors hate him. Okay? Because what happened, all their rankings fell to page two because he created the signals of expertise, authority, and trust. Okay? Through the art of PR. So... And, and this is all. And so what is that? And I know that, so you just started that. What does that start to do like over time? Like over time, it, it starts to build, right? Correct. So now what we did was we created a hybrid strategy. We used to announce the story so the media knows about it. Now, hopefully the journalists will contact him. But if they did not, let's say assuming they did not, his brand is going to be shown on the first page of Google. The Yahoo News story will be on the first page. And because Yahoo is such an authoritative website, unless you have a site, a website that is more authoritative than Yahoo, his site will always, or his Yahoo story will always rank. And there are, there are 10 of those that are ranking right now. So somebody really has to have a really powerful story to bury our story down, but we are going to do more. So with the passage of time, our content starts to mature, and as it matures, it passes on the juice to his Google listing, and as a result, his, his own website, which he doesn't have, but his own Facebook page will start to rank. His map is already ranking, so I don't know what else will happen to this guy, but the, the next thing that should happen to, to him is that he should get, you know, more phone calls for his business. And so as passage of time grows, obviously he needs to do more of that. But, you know, this is just the beginning for him. And the I feel like the image section and just let maybe talk about different parts on Google because I know and we talked about this in previous episodes so we don't yes. have to go so, too far into it but so for people Google, that have like the Google box the boxes like all this stuff yeah. like 
let's just say if you're playing a video game, you like you get to unlock other levels or other characters. <laughs> Absolutely. So if you if you Google, there is the Google search, which is the default. Now, when we posted this content, we also posted an image of the store. So that would show up in the Google images. So right now, when people search for him, they are so seeing his story, but they're also seeing right below, it's called a top story carousel. So they're seeing his story and his images coming from the image. So the store is showing up. So that's Google Images. Now, if we had a video, we could embed a video and that would show as a YouTube video. So if this guy would have a video of how to repair your iPhone, he would have that showing up. You know, and since we created a news article, his article is also going in Google News. So technically, because Google is universal, it's got so many, you know, tentacles, everything starts to show. And we do this a lot for the clients. You know, when we are doing their PR, we take a picture, we stitch it back to the Google images. You know, we also post into news, we post into YouTube. And we even tweet about it. So when people are actually searching, they, they find relevant tweets about the business. So that's another footprint. So that is the benefit of uh, PR blended with SEO. What kind of stories are appropriate? Like give us a feel for that. For somebody that like has never done PR, they've heard that they've heard it and maybe they're listening and they're like, I don't know what I would put out there. Like, like that's um, a challenge. That, that, uh, that's a great question. The biggest challenge of the people is that, well, I don't have a PR, so what should I do? You can have product announcements, you can have service announcements, you can have event announcements, you can have new hire announcements. Heck, if you don't have any announcement, make up a story of your five best customer reviews that you've got in the last 30 days and make that as an announcement. You can tell any kind of a story as long as it's legit. Obviously, you don't make up stories, but every business has customer review. You know, they can talk about stories of struggle of their business. You know, the times that COVID happened, how they struggled, and now they are helping. There are stories of products how their products are getting featured into different places, how their products are changing life. Like I work with a client and they're in the business of hair replacement. You know, they are constantly talking about case studies of how men that are bald are coming to them and they are putting stories about them, stories and struggles of their hair loss. I mean, I just did an announcement for a hairstylist you know, she just graduated from a hairstyle school and she started her own business. And even though we could have done an announcement about starting the business, she went into a co-working space to start a business. So we created a story about how a millennial hairstylist is using co-working for her new gig. So it's like, I can sit and imagine so many things and that's why you know if they need some guidance we are always available to help them there is never a shortage of story you know mm -hmm. you don't have to have a press announcement like the big companies do you know not every company is tesla but i can come up with you can give me a topic right now on the fly and i can tell you this would be the angle i would take yeah, and that I think that's really relevant is that you don't have to be Tesla. You don't have to be like like the way PR is set up and the way that you do it specifically around brand store and things like that is that you can give people, you know, valuable information and you can teach them a lesson and you can get your announcement and everything out there in a very, you know, tasteful and thoughtful way that's on brand without having to say you're launching a rocket, <laughs> basically. Well, we we have a client in New York. He's a bicyclist who is a lawyer. We were doing his branding for a long time, or at least during the COVID. But then one day, I had a call from his wife that he almost died in Central Park because mm. he was dehydrated. And the EMT people had to come and rescue him. They thought he Whoa. had a heart attack. But this guy was like in good shape. 
he was nowhere, but he was dehydrated. So he, the doctors put him on, uh, you know, says, no, you can't bike, etc. Now he calls me and he says, Q, I am going to do this bike trick again. And what kind of a story should we do? And it says, you know, Mr. X is back in the race again, you know? So we mm. created a story. We told the story about how he almost died and he's back and he did it. And, you know, now we are writing a new PR for that. So there, there are many, many ways that we can create announcements. It's just we have to be creative because we do this all the time. You know, we are just quite creative in creating those stories. That's awesome. No, I mean, this has been great. I'm just – so now if somebody is thinking about PR and how it fits into their overall strategy, especially if they haven't done it in the past, where do you recommend they start? The first thing is when they are starting any kind of marketing, whether it's a PR, SEO, the very first thing I talk to them is who is going to read the PR. What's your audience? If it's the SEO, who do you want to target? If it's the PR, who do you want to target? And they will say, well, I want to target, you know, men in Dallas that are between the age of 40 and 60 and they are balding, okay? Now, at least now I know that I can identify to write the story about that. So then what I do is I have this cool hack and, and I'm going to give it to you for free. You go to audience in Facebook and you put in the city, you put in the demographics, and it'll tell you how big is the audience of men in Dallas. And now that we know and what they wear, what kind of cars they drive, all that data is actually available in Google. It's called Google, uh, sorry, in Facebook. It's called Facebook audience. Once you Get that information for free, or if you don't know how to do it, call us and we'll help you find out. You now give it to your PR strategist or do it yourself, and you write a story about your business and how you are starting off. So it, the very first thing is identify who you're talking to, because when you talk to everybody, you're not talking to anyone. Okay, mm. So make sure that your audience is on point. The rest is just happens. That's awesome. Well, Kamar, as always, I mean, this has been a great episode, and I look forward to the next one. That being said, if somebody's listening to this right now and they want to learn more about, you know, working with Kiss PR and also some of your strategies and other things, I mean, especially if they go back and they listen to the previous episodes and just continue to follow, like they're going to get a ton of information, a ton of knowledge you give away for free, but it's all in the execution. So that being said, again, if somebody wants to learn more about Kiss PR and to connect with you and your team, what's the best way for them to do that? They can find us on KISSPR.com, K-I-S-S-P-R.com. And they can just apply online or just give us a call. There's a phone number that directly rings to me. I answer personally every call to make sure that I am the first line of person that they talk to. So there's no operator, nothing. I talk to them. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I know you have a lot of audiences, the digital marketing agencies, authors, etc. Last year, we started this white label SEO service. So if you are a company wanting to grow your business but you don't have the bandwidth, we now have a white label program where you get the glory and we do all the work for you in the back office. We can help you too. You earn the nine-figure income and, you know, we will in the same process earn with you and we will have an ecosystem of something we have already developed so we are scaling it. You know, we have really built this. We understand this business very well and we wanted to make it successful for us first before we do it for others. So now we have that. So it's a white label SEO, and that's also available. And obviously, kissvr.com. They can just come in and talk to us. Awesome. Well, again, Kamar, thank you again for coming on the show. Can't wait to record again. It's going to be great. And uh, to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. Hope you learned a lot. I sure did. Especially if you're a first-time visitor and a listener, definitely hit that subscribe button. We definitely want you to. We have many more mission-based entrepreneurs, executives, and experts coming on, and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Kamar, thanks again for coming on. It's been fun.
Thank you, Adam.